Um, Jeff Edder um, has a question. Please unmute Jeff. Hello, can you hear me, Warren? Yes. Yeah, I actually would like to debate you on your STAB hypothesis. Okay. Uh, you fired back a few things on Twitter, um, but I know this is not the place to do it because um, uh, there's just not enough time to cover all the nuances of it. Okay. But um, uh, You can use my email. Okay, sure. If you can or, or just message me on Twitter and we can get started. Have you, have you read my seven deadly innocent frauds? Yeah, and okay. I would prefer, yeah, I would prefer to like have an actual debate with the moderator if you're interested. Oh. But for the question, what is your definition of currency? Because what I notice is that MMTers they conflate currency with all money creation. Right, I don't do so, that. And and I just want to ask you: Do you agree that the majority of digital money in circulation is created through the loans process? Okay, so. Uh, the dollars in bank accounts are all created by commercial banks, except for the cash in circulation, but it's 100% created by commercial banks. When commercial banks make loans, they are buying your signed note and crediting your account. That's a new deposit that didn't exist before. So in that sense, it's bank loans, bank lending that creates bank deposits. And those deposits can be used to pay taxes because banks are agents of Congress through the Federal Reserve Act. Warren says that bank money can be used to pay taxes, which is true. So the whole STAP hypothesis hinges upon whether or not banks are creating money for the government. Nowhere in the Federal Reserve Act are commercial banks referred to as agents of Congress. I used to own a bank. I know how much we were an agent of Congress. We had regulators breathing down our neck continuously. You know, they regulate our capital, our assets what we can make loans, what we can't make loans. Uh, it's called the CAMEL, C-A-M-E-L-S, our management. They don't like my president. I have to fire the guy. Uh, earnings, liquidity, every, everything is under you know, direct uh, capital adequacy, you name it. It's all under direct control of Congress. So uh, I consider banks as agents of Congress, much like the military platoon would be an ag agent of Congress. Okay, so can I- So yes, yes, that, that's where most of the balance is. Okay. So I'm glad you said that. I'm, a, I'm yeah. glad you said that, and I know you that, that you are aware of that. Um, but when banks create loans, like yeah. even though they're they're regulated, yeah. banks create loans for their own profit. That's the prime motivation. When you right, know? right. But they they have to do it within a very narrow scope set by the uh, regulators, and no, the regulators I come in. Yeah, I mean, I was there. The regulators would look at a loan and say, "Look, this doesn't qualify under our guidelines." You know, you have to take a haircut against your capital. It doesn't count. Exactly. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you do have those restrictions. Yes. But you don't go in uh, in a session where you're providing a loan and think, well, how can I benefit the government correct. When, I the, when I create this loan? My yeah, you just motive, say, right. My prime motive right. is profit, correct? Right, correct. Right. So this is kind of a, talk, a common talking point uh, amongst MMTers is that, they well, look, Jeff, Jeff, don't forget the banks compete with each other. So, you know, so they're yeah. all, the banks compete with each other for the loans. No, I totally agree. Uh, right, I right, totally right, understand right. it. But they're competing right. against each other for, yes. a, yeah. for a profit. Yes, 100%. Not, not, 100%. not to benefit the, the government in any way whatsoever. Exactly, I agree. So now, Warren agrees that commercial banks do not create money for the benefit of the government. And therefore... Commercial banks are not agents of Congress. Congress is the legislative branch of the federal government that represents the American people and makes the nation's laws. Moving on. Okay, that's good. So my one of my main points and my objections, because I'm very familiar with the deficit myth. Yeah. And also I've read your book, Soft Currency Economics, too. Okay, good. So when you conflate, like by omission, because you don't mention this, that the majority of digital money circulation is created, you know, by commercial banks with a profit motive, yeah. then you, it makes the it's assumption. The only thing that uh, like a newborn reader would say or think when they read that is that the government creates all the currency in existence. And you conflate currency, yeah. which is actually banknotes. 
according to all central banks, that's how they define it as yeah. banknotes, correct? Yeah, yeah. I, I don't I don't use that narrow definition. I just say the dollar, the yen, the mark, the things that you know that the government designates that can be used for payment of taxes. Okay, but, but this, all, this all fits in to yeah. your stab hypothesis. Right. And the central bankers right. use the central bankers got their definition from convertible currency. Those were those were the things that could be converted to gold. So it was well, reserves right. plus currency. It was base money, that, his, and that's not a, that's not applicable anymore. Yeah. Yeah, that that's historically accurate. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. But that is a definition used by all central banks right now. Is okay. Uh, currency is banknotes. Yeah. So when you say that, and actually the quotes from Stephanie Kelton's book, yeah, that's what she's talking about. She's talking yeah. about the right of the central bank, the sole right to be the monopoly, the monopoly issuer of currency. Two quotes from The Deficit Myth by Stephanie Kelton. That's because the U.S. Constitution grants the federal government the exclusive right to issue the currency. As the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis put it, the U.S. government is the sole manufacturer of dollars. In the first footnote, the U.S. Constitution is clearly referring to currency as banknotes. The second footnote trivializes the role bank money plays by saying it can act like currency in some instances. The reality is it is used in almost all instances. In Canada, the amount of bank money compared to actual currency, that's paper dollars, is approximately 96.5%. But that does yeah. not include the majority of digital money in circulation. Okay, okay. so I, I, if I had, if I, you know, I'm not sure that when I, I worked with Randy on his 1998 book, and I, I think that one is, will be technically correct on everything where the money is, a, is defined as a thing that twin to puck, he called it, that which can be used to pay taxes. And I think Stephanie, I, I haven't finished her book, but I think she's got it in there. It's the, the thing that can be used to pay taxes. Now, maybe later on, you know, the word currency is used in that way. And I would not do that. Okay, that's, that's good to hear. So yeah. uh, in Kelton's book, there's yeah. a quote where she says that, yeah. you know, <laughs> she, she says exactly that, that it's yeah. that federal, th federal taxes don't pay for anything. Yeah. So now, do, you, um, do you agree that federal taxes don't pay for anything? A quote from Stephanie Kelton's book, The Deficit Myth, your taxes don't actually pay for anything, at least at the federal level. Well, again, that's ambiguous language. I, what I say is the federal government is not revenue constrained, okay, when they spend. Federal spending is not constrained by tax revenues. Now, that is not to say that the Treasury is not constrained. Okay, they are. The Treasury is politically constrained from spending by tax revenues or borrowing. It is true the federal government is not revenue constrained. However, funds for borrowing come from commercial banks and the Fed, which are entered into the Treasury's operating cash balance before the government can spend. But the federal government is not, and the federal government includes the Fed. So what they've done is they've set up two agencies, they constrained one and not indirectly not the other. So what the Fed can do is spend without taxing, spend first. They can do repos. They can, you know, buy the collateralized well, notes of the primary <laughs> dealers to provide the funds that the Treasury can then borrow, right? So Warren confuses government spending with providing repos and loans to commercial banks by the Fed. And the funds created by the Fed are then used to purchase securities, not direct spending of the government. The proceeds of those security sales are entered as deposits in the operating cash balance of the Treasury's general account before the government can spend. Okay, well, and this so, is kind of refreshing for me. Yeah, uh, so the government as a whole is not constrained, but they, a lot of well, agencies but, are constrained. But, but this again, this, this goes yeah. back into the stab hypothesis about the government spending first. So yes, once, yes. The, once the government d decides that it's going mm. to spend through yes. Congress, right? Yeah. Through, through the budget committee. Yeah. Then the actual mechanical process goes into effect. Yes. So the only other way that the government can raise money 
outside of taxes and revenue. Not the government, the Treasury. The Treasury is a government agency that manages the U.S. government's finances. The Treasury is responsible for revenue collection and the borrowing of funds necessary to run the federal government. Is, is to issue not, securities, correct? No, no, not the government, the Treasury. Yes, but for the government, the only way that the government can well, the Federal Reserve is part of the government. The Federal Reserve is part of the government, right? And they don't they don't raise money or not raise money. They don't have dollars or not have dollars. They just credit accounts and debit accounts. You yeah. know, so so when you, if you include the Federal Reserve, they can spend first by crediting an account. Okay, there's and in there's fact no they, do. they do they do they do they do spend first by crediting an accounts. Yeah, there's no evidence though that they credit the accounts first. Looking at the withdrawal side of the operating cash balance of the Treasury's general account, one can see the various government agencies listed in that column, where they draw funds from the Treasury's daily operating cash balance. Now, if Warren could show me where the Fed directly deposits funds into any one of these agencies, he might have an argument in support of STAB. However, no such information exists. Like if you look. Oh, sure, sure there is. Oh, no. Okay, show me. If you can f provide a link for that. Because if you yeah. look at the daily or the monthly treasury statements, yeah. it, it shows how it works. That's why they have the operating cash. Yeah, but you, you, you have to remember cash. that. You have to remember a, an overdraft in an account is spending by the Fed. It's a loan. It's an overdraft loan. It's a Fed purchase of that promissory, that promise to pay. And it's, okay. they grant overdrafts. So that it's a line of credit. And that is that is technically or operationally Fed spending. An overdraft is the same as a loan, which okay, is but the th the which thing is, is a subset is of no, spending. An overdraft or running negative capital by the Fed occurs before dollar amounts are entered into the Treasury's general account. Warren definitely has me confused at this point. I was still talking about the operating cash balance. Yes, there is no wholesale overdraft capacity. That's that's why the operating. By who? Wait, say that again. Yes. Who who doesn't have an overdraft capacity? An overall overdraft for, capacity. For who? For who? For anybody. So when I mean, you they, look when you look at the Treasury statement, the, well, the, the Fed market, doesn't have the Fed doesn't have overdrafts. They just credit an account, and then their capital goes negative. So that would be an overdraft. The Fed the Fed can run negative capital. They have an open ended ability to run negative capital. Again, confusing. I think anyone listening can hear the contradiction. The Fed doesn't have overdrafts, but it does. Either way, it isn't relevant to the conversation at this point. Okay. If you look at the monthly or daily treasury yeah. statement, it sure. clearly shows inflows, outflows, and the operating cash balance always has to be positive before the government can spend. Before the treasury can spend. Not the, the government. Okay. Yeah, but, but the, the Fed the has treasury, the, the treasury pays the government. Government spending is drawn from the operating cash balance of the treasury's general account, not the Fed. The, the, no, no, there is no the government. There's a yes, you heard that right. There is no government. I had to chuckle. The treasury, there's the Fed, there's Congress. Okay, look, the the, the Fed has already spent when treasury sell gets paid for its securities the money the treasury gets comes from the fed yeah that's where i totally disagree and there's no okay well, I can't. so this was about the ninth time i was interrupted before i could finish what i was saying i disagreed that the fed has already spent wrong word usage and this is an important semantic distinction the Fed has created money for primary dealers to purchase securities as previously explained. However, Warren is somewhat correct when he says the money the Treasury gets comes from the Fed. Look, I look at the primary dealer set. Are you familiar with that? Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so they've, you know, the, the uh, dealers, uh, you know, borrow the money from the Fed through repos to pay, that, that pays the Treasury. Agreed. And that money is recorded as deposits in the operating cash balance of the Treasury's general account, where it can now be used for government spending. So, is, no, I was, I was is, a primary dealer for like two years at Bankers Trust. I watched these guys do this stuff. 
Is it yeah, okay well, if we make yeah. this into a private conversation okay. yeah, so sure, that sure. we can get to other people's questions? Sure. I, I don't All mean right. to be rude, Jeff. Well, let's do that, and then we can come back to this at the end if there's still time. Yeah, okay. no, I would love Absolutely. to continue this with you, Warren. Okay. Some of but we can, we can do this privately any time. But I, I, I really, if you go to any central banker, they say, look, we can't do a reserve drain without a prior reserve ad. So we already know what the government spends first. You know, let's talk about something else. I don't even talk about it. Yeah. <laughs> but go ahead. We can talk about it later. All right. Yeah. Well, I would like to talk about it later because the Canadian and U.S. governments do not spend first. There is no doubt about it. Taxes and borrowing precede spending, not the other way around. I will leave you with one final affirmation in a statement by Natalie Gauthier, Manager of Consultations and Communications Branch of the Department of Finance Canada, dated October 9th, 2020. All spending undertaken by the government is financed in advance. Yeah, Warren is lovely with his time, I must say. Thank you, Warren. And he yeah. will he'll definitely discuss this with you in detail, Jeff. Yeah.